Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. The Waverly Select Board of January 10th, 2018. First item is approved minutes, meeting minutes of December 11th. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Those in favor, aye. Okay. Go on. Uh, next item is public hearing for a license to store flammables. Mostly propane at 51, uh, 41 River Road, Whaley, uh, by Norse Realty, I guess is the owner. Yes. Are you uh, representing Norse? I am. Yeah. Could, could you come, you come up come and forward, a little so. closer? Sure. Closer to the microphone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a representative from from Austin Gas, if you guys have any questions. Okay. Okay. Could you uh, give us an overview of what you're proposing to do here? So, um, basically, if you look at what I submitted, there's uh, it actually is kind of a consolidation of, of tanks that were existing on the property. There's been new construction. Um, of a new greenhouse and tanks that fed the old facilities that can move to the west of the back of the site and uh, are kind of distributed from, from that back tank there. Um, I can explain the photo if you want. There's the arrow. Oh, okay. That's a Google shot and is probably more explanatory than the cuts out of the assessor's map. Um, yeah. The assessor's cuts are basically just to kind of demonstrate that it's these tanks are yeah. situated on substantial acreage right. and not on, on you know a 200 by 200 lot. And these are all essentially the same map. It's just it's different, different views points. of the assessor's cut. Yeah. Okay. Are there 12? Are there 12 going together? Um, the way the form is is asking the question yeah um one tank is service in our tissue culture lab uh in the photo and that's to the north and we have eight tanks service in the greenhouses right now and it was austin's recommendation to <coughs> kick the number a little bit higher um on our request just in case with the conditions and once we bring the greenhouses to full load we need additional tanks that would save coming back. So you have nine now. So there would be nine currently. One, one with the lab nine and eight with the greenhouses. If, if we need it. Yep. So where are you putting the, th the three additional? So that if if they're needed, if they're needed, the three additional will go here. Go oh, there. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, and this only shows five, but that's just because Google Maps. That's whatever day they have to behind the time. Right, yeah. whatever day they have to take. And so, just so this so is now you're saying eight here. There's eight there currently. And potentially you're asking permission for up to twelve total, so that would be possibly three more over here. Exactly. In and addition there's to the one here, and then and no, this, but no expansion over here. No, in the consolidation, and, this tank, this tank, and this tank. Have been moved. Oh, okay. So that's that's what, what the eight tanks are made. These ones have been already moved exactly. today. Gotcha. Okay. That was you knew what my next question was going to be. And then <laughs> we've actually shifted the tank out of here, um, and that's disappeared for the time being. If we require you know, more more propane service, mm -hmm. that's why we're asking for yeah. more. And these things over here are. This looks too big. Looks like Th a those truck. are trucks. Yeah. Install um, the additional ones. The tanks are on site now. They'll be if you know permission is granted, we would fill them um, because in the in the move from the old greenhouses to the current site, it just didn't make sense to pull them off site. Yeah. Okay. Our I guess our fire chief here said something about concrete barrier. Protection on the north 
and each side. And those currently are wrapped with, with jersey that's there to That's there today, so you know. Yes, sir. North and East, you continue that, okay. So they're not, the only one well, visible really from the road is maybe this one back up on the, the north. And, and, and that is visible, that's behind the building. Yeah, it's behind the building. Yeah. Okay. So not, nothing is, is really visible. Public, have any comments, concerns with this? No. Okay. Um, I would recommend that, it, that any motion that be made include the fire chief's recommendation. That way, it's no, incorporated. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to double check on that because I know you said it while I was thinking about something else and looking at yeah, the things we have here, and that is recommendations: concrete barrier protection on north and east sides which on this map, if I understand the direction, would be the north, north and then east, like yeah. between the tanks and the building? Yeah, it basically it's protect uh, the tanks um, in the winter time when there's snow plowing. And so on the east side of the tanks, there's there's a access, the, an access to right the back side. So, so the Jersey barriers here protect the tanks from a plowing that way, and then the Jersey barriers on the north side protect them from a snow push. Oh, okay, Sorry. and those the barriers though are not there at the moment. Yes, they are. Oh, they are there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I hear a motion. Uh, why don't I make the motion um, to grant the application for license um, with the notation that the Fire Chief has recommended these barriers, and they, uh, I understand they are in, and we're obviously trusting you on that, but, but they stay there, and I imagine that's something that's on John's uh, radar now. Uh, I don't know if that's, how does that work as an official motion? So with the, uh, with the, with the continue that, that this is here, and yep. needs, 12, 000, needs to stay there. Up to 12,000 gallons of liquefied propane. Yep. Okay, I'll, I'll second the motion. And before we vote, well, I just want to do some questions. How close are these here to the property line? Um, if you come back to the one of the assessor's cuts, um, so there's a property line here, and that's probably about 300 feet. Um, and this property line is, is owned by Mrs. Norse. Um, Further on, it's it's 400, 450 feet. Where are these these ta are these tanks? Right here. Uh, these these tanks are right here. Those tanks. Yeah. Uh, are right yes. here. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Okay. So you own. Okay. That's so so the, okay. the back line is. Yes. yes. Okay. So this is not a property line. No, that's just. No, okay. Well, I wasn't was yeah. that, yeah. That's actually. That, that, I was gonna say that must be the pavement. Yes. Yeah. Marks. Okay. Okay. Motions been made, seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Can I ask for your name for the record, please? Yeah, Bob Mazula. Can you spell that? M I Z U L A. Oh, okay. So we'll we'll write up the actual license and then we'll let you know when it's ready to be picked up. Sounds good. Great. Thanks for your Thank you. Okay. Okay, our next item is uh, comments from the public. Anybody have any comments? Paul or Dan? Uh, I'd just like to commend Joyce and the energy team and, of course, Brian for the great negotiation on the solar. I think that was impressive. That's, items like that keep Waitley very affordable. And we all appreciate it. Yeah. Well, was Joyce and Paul? And Paul was on there. Was there a third? Um, we, Brian, and we, we, did, we did hire some help. Yeah, we well, got to the point where we knew. I we think well help. done. We I've... needed help, and um, we were not afraid to. Uh, yeah, to, to, to get. Now we got good help. I don't think you could have done much better. That's great. Okay. Any other comments? No, Paul, you don't think we're great too? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be great. I have one comment. 
Where's John? Uh, he might be, uh, uh, might be a medical team. Is he coming? No. John. No. Oh, no. he's going to be here today. Okay. No, schedule, no schedule appointments, the next old business. Town hall project update and discussion. So the town hall project is moving forward pretty well. Um, and Freddie can jump in whenever you want. Okay. Um, so this, the stair tower has been taken off, the foundation's been poured, and the back has been uh, framed and sheathed, right, I believe? Yes. Um, and they're continuing some of the interior demolition. I believe that's almost done. They're going to be um, starting some of the um, you know, some of the construction. They've done some some sistering of the beams to make sure the building's uh, yeah. stable yeah. for the next 100 and how many ever 20 years it's been. Mm -hmm. um, more than that, right? Um, years. Okay, math. Um, so. It's been moving along pretty well um, in terms of costs. It's we're really right on where we were hoping to be. Um, there hasn't been uh, any significant increases um, in the construction cost to date. So there's been some shifting of some some items around and some reductions and some additions, um, like you would expect in any construction project. But um, it's moving forward pretty well. Yeah, we've been coordinating with the historic commission and slash society, I guess, on some of the cosmetic stuffs inside the paint colors, uh, most of that, the colors of the shingles, and, uh, trim and windows and that kind of stuff. So we met earlier today to, uh, today to talk about some of that. There's been meetings every two weeks with the contractor to do that. So uh, I know we were worried about like uh, change orders. Well, it sounds like that's been kept to a minimum. So we're far, still on um, track for cost. So far, but we have we could have some major ones coming up. Uh, they're in the process of, of uh, doing some redesign where the bathrooms are going to be because the floor was not stable enough to put ceramic tile on the floor, so they have to rebuild that floor. Mm -hmm. So we may have additional costs there, but uh, then there's some site work maybe uh, coming that we didn't anticipate. So okay, well, let's keep so there going. so there could be uh, uh, there, there probably will be some additional costs. I'm just saying. Yeah, that we but don't we know haven't sure. had it yet. But nothing nothing really major. Uh, and okay. the, the contractor has been working with us on some of these and, and helping us get the best option available and there's some some of these there's more than one way of doing it and we've been discussing them and, and uh, getting the best option with the contractor so he's familiar with with some of the issues that we have going through so that's that's good he's experienced with it and he's got a good crew there that's that's very open and telling us what concerns they have or they're not sure or, or the plans don't say really how we want it and they ask us so they are good about that so mm -hmm. and it's Those are all good signs right and they're not so far nickel and diamond us on every little change it's yes it's, it's mm -hmm. not shown on a plan say so okay Paul, Just, uh, yeah um so when it, when you come up against an issue such as the bathroom project and now cer ceramic tile. In order to put ceramic tile down, you have to bolster uh, the subfloor. Right. Right. Um, in that scenario, is the, and that might lead to more cost. Right. In, in that sen sen scenario, would the either the architect or the builder be suggesting a linoleum, in which lifetime probably similar to what a ceramic tile is um, and and I, I would imagine the cost has to be significantly less so in other words to keep keep to keep within mm -hmm. to keep within the dollar figure um, you know I'm not suggesting that we you know cheapen the the project but if we can stay within the dollar figure and still 
at the end of the day still have a nice project finished, then. Well, that, that was discussed as an option early in the design before we started construction. It's still linoleum there instead of ceramic tile. And I guess the committee thought for long-term durability, ceramic tile was a better option. Uh, not only on the floor, but I think on a, on a wall of three or four feet was going to be ceramic tile. But the, the problem is not whether you do, uh, the problem with the flooring is not whether you do ceramic or linoleum or, or wood. It's just the structure, the floor structure is not stable. There's crowns and bows there. There's no footings in part of it. You're standing 15 feet with a, with minimal lumber. So, uh, and, and that was not able to be verified before because you couldn't access it. It was between the safe and between the vault and the front of the building. You couldn't get in there physically to, to look at it. Yeah. And now you could once they open the floor up. So you'd have to redo the floor anyway, or whether you put ceramic or linoleum. Or, mm -hmm. and, and the grades were, yeah, I guess you don't see it until you, you open all this up. There's three inches difference between one side of the, that room to the other, mm -hmm. which would make a difference in the thresholds for the two doors for the bathrooms. Yeah. So we had to correct that. But yeah, we are looking at yeah, it's done. It doesn't need to be done. Right. No, we're not doing it. No, because okay. it's not going to be perfect. There's things still that aren't going to be perfect in there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Okay, okay moving on. Uh, next item, 250th anniversary steering committee appointment of members. So in our last discussions, well, in, over multiple meetings, um, we were trying to figure out in, in what, how we would want to formalize the 250th anniversary committee. And I think what we came up with was the idea that we would have a official, in official um, steering committee for the 250th anniversary committee that would be a smaller number of folks who would be in charge of coordinating the larger number of volunteers for all the various activities. And we had made a request to um, all the people who were meeting as part of the 250th anniversary committee um, to come up with a uh, purpose for the committee, which they've done, um, and also to recommend um, five to seven members who could be appointed um, to the steering committee. And we have six recommendations or nominations. Um, so if the board was willing to uh, um, establish the steering committee, Ideally, with this specific purpose, as as recommended by the committee here, and then we would, um, you know, move to appoint uh, the people who were nominated from from this group of people who are Keith Bartwell, um, Fred Barron, Susan Barron, John Hannum, Joyce Palmer Fortune, and Don Sluter. So I don't know discussion about whether we want to put together the steering committee to. I think it's an important next step for this for the 20, 250th anniversary committee to have, you know, officially recognized town committee to perform some of the functions that we have to do. And so I would be in favor of doing this. Um, do you have any other okay, and, and things you think we should talk about? I, I mean, the the, the mission is. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not commenting on what's written here, but this would we would have to establish this as a committee to be in our budget for future years. Yeah, if the town were to. Yeah, yeah. In order that's for the, one of the reasons to to set it up now because I think they're looking at uh, asking for money in a budget for next fiscal year, right? Correct. Okay. January sixteenth, budgets are due. Okay. The only recommend, yeah, I have no problem with the people. I guess I would would have liked to see maybe somebody from the school committee or the agriculture yeah. uh, community represented because they are a big part of our, our town here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there the, there's outreach to the school committee, yeah. but we haven't gotten okay. a response yet. 
from uh, the people that they, and I don't remember who was doing the average to school committee, it might have been Susan. Um, but they, yeah, the, those were, the, definitely school was a place to outreach because a lot of activities when you've got students, you know. Um, but uh, we don't have that yet. But we've got one okay. more slot. I, I had a quick question. Um, if they were to want to, to fill that seventh slot, it'd be a select board appointment. Is that correct? They don't. They would recommend a person, perhaps, but or we, if we found a person, we could we could uh, appoint them. Point but it's yes. basically our job to appoint. And, Thank you. Okay. So, well, let me ask: Is there anybody here that wants to be on the committee? No. 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 Okay. It's <laughs> quiet, quiet out in the back. Yeah, it's quiet out back there. Is there anyone from the Grange that's interested? Well, Dee is very active in the group, but she did right. not want to be on the steering committee. Yeah, I think Dee's um, in the Grange. There's a lot of other people. Yeah, it, there are a lot of those people involved in the, the other committees, and they come to the to the meetings and such. But they didn't want to be on the steering committee per se. Okay, I guess I, I can make a motion that we accept these I would nominations for this committee. And the formation and these yeah. and the founding members. Right. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on, next item, Water Merger Exploration Committee. Uh, there's some right up here on, the, on this committee that's Brian, did you want to? You want to? Sure. This was many meetings back. It was yeah. Joyce before, I think before it came on in Paul. Paul. Oh, wow. This this was a couple of years ago too. So yeah. Yeah, it's been going on for a while. Um, the recommendation from this board was that there be. Um, uh, I refer to it as a, a group of stakeholders that get together and try to figure out. Um, various aspects of how this merger might happen and how it might be funded, how costs might be shared. What we've been waiting for is some preliminary cost estimates that are, we call them preliminary, but pretty, pretty close before we jump into a discussion of how costs are allocated and who's doing what and who's responsible for what. And we've, we've reached that point, the water department and the Water District have been working with uh, Berkshire Design, the engineer from Berkshire Design Group, and they're pretty close to uh, final cost estimates for the project. So it seemed like a good time to put this group together now to, to try to talk about um, these issues. And the Water District, the Water District has um, appoint, appointed three representatives to the group, um, Nicholas mm -hmm. Jones, Mary Stewart, and Scott Jackson, and um, really looking for the select board as to what you want to do in terms of mm -hmm. select board going to represent the, the town. Um, well, I'd nominate John, basically. That's <laughs> well, I, I've been involved. We've been kind of meeting some of these people over the last six or nine months. And mm -hmm. I've been meeting with some of them. Well, some of the discussions, I guess I would like to be a select board member, continue representing the select board. Okay, I have no objection to that. Um, so, okay. do we need a motion to uh, establish the water merger committee with the representation written up in this document that you just read out loud? Nicholas Jones, Mary Stewart, Scott Jackson. Uh, instead of TBD, it would be Fred. Bar uh, Fred. Um, then uh, Paul, George, George Ann, and Paul Florio. So if, if if that's what we want to do for the for the composition of of the group, I would exclude the water district representatives because they're in theory. Oh, we don't pick them. They're in theory going to represent the interests of the water right. district. Okay, we don't um, in discussion. So, okay. um, and then the three people that are, are the water commissioners, who who really have you know, control management over the water system. So yep. obviously their involvement is is necessary. Is necessary. Um, and okay. finance committee member um, because you know, he's recently released from his funds. solar pilot obligations. Right, he's finished up the next stuff. 
I need to fill it up. He got his house painted, so we're all set now, right? Well, most of the houses. Is, is there a goal to present something at the next annual town meeting? The goal is to have the opportunity to. Okay. Um, I don't want to they presuppose mean, yeah. the results of, yeah. of, of, the, of the discussions okay. as, to, as to how it might be, okay. how this might be funded. Understood. Okay, then I guess we'll move to appoint as town representatives to the Water Merger Committee. Uh, Fred Orlowski, Paul Antea, George Abukala, George Ann Default, and Paul Florio. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. And, and the expectation is that um, Wayne Hankoski, the water superintendent, and myself would participate, but not as committee members. Okay, next item moving on is the complete streets committee. You know, Public love, yeah, yeah. love committees. In here, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, you have a proposal for that? Yep. So, I feel like you've gone over this many, many, many times mm -hmm. with the complete streets. Okay. Um, we're still in phase two of complete streets. Phase three is construction. Phase two is something called a prioritization plan. That's where you define, that's where you identify your complete street projects and then you prioritize them. Mass DOT has, give, has granted the town um, just under $30,000 to hire for a COG transportation planner to work with the town to identify complete streets and projects and prioritize them. So we need to put together um, another, a committee or group of people who, who we can have work with um, the FERCOG transportation planner. Now, I know in the past there was the there was the group that did the Conway School of Design Center of Town streetscape project, but the work of the of the complete streets committee is going to be broader. It's going to it's going to it's not just going to focus on the center of town. It needs to focus on the town as a whole, and uh, we need to figure out who those people are going to be. I don't know that that I haven't asked anybody to be on it, but I mean the thought is is that we would. We would want a select board I, member. I would think the highway department yep. head or uh, appropriate member, I would assume that the, the head of the, the Keith would yep. be the most logical person here. Right. Um, so we want a select board member, highway department, um, somebody from the planning board, because they're mm -hmm. on the streets. Who's they, yeah. um, Ideally, someone with some um, connection to the historic center of town, because now we'll presuppose the results of, of our work. Um, <laughs> the likely one, the, the higher priority projects, what probably going to include the center of town, which would include the the Whaley Center Historic District. So it'd be good to have. Because we're putting in so our investment in the town hall, that would make that area a high priority in all likelihood. Even though we don't really presuppose the right. Because we have to go through the process before we get the results. Yeah. Um, and then maybe one or two at large uh, folks within the town. We, we can see, and I'll just take a look to see who else was on that, that Conway committee who may have some interest because presupposing that the center is one of our, one of our top priorities, they have a lot of information. To that was kind of an ad hoc committee. I don't think that was a formal committee set up. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was some people in the center of town. There was some from, well, most, both parts of the town. I guess all parts of the town were kind of represented, not just the center. Yeah. And they ended up focusing on the center, so. Yeah. Um, is our goal tonight to come up with a sort of a short list of people we might want to uh, address? assign something we're looking for, uh, but nominate and ask to serve? Yeah, at least where we, at least what interests we want represented. So we talked yeah. about... So highway, uh, board selectmen, and... Planning board. Often finance committee gets thrown in, but this is good. This is 
not necessarily going to be the case on this because they're, they're still too early in the stage. It, it's not going to require yeah. um, funding. But it is, yeah, someone from, from who was interested, it wouldn't matter if they were on the rights right. committee, but it does, it does, it's not screaming out okay. finance committee to me. Right. Historic Commission. Highway Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, Historic. It's for uh, maybe an at-large. If we were looking at at large, is there some merit to having them geographically distributed? You know, like getting uh, you know, some. If you divide the town, most often people divide the town of west, east, and central. Okay. Right. Um, that that might be a good goal. It might depend on who uh, is is on. The, for example, Keith is in West Waitley already. So some of the other. Um, people bringing expertise to this will be from various parts of town. But it um, might depend on who we have there that we want to use it to balance out. Um, yeah, most of, I can see most of these are from, uh, I don't need to pick certain parts of the town, but but the center and the, and the west parts of the town, I would, I would say. But we don't know who's the board of selectmen representative. Yet, no, for example. no, we don't know. That. We don't know who from the planning board or who from the historic commission would be. Well, we're looking at who, where the, the members are. Oh, we are tell. you talking about the ad hoc committee? No, no. This oh. com whoever's on the historic commission today, you know where they are. Where they are. You know who planning board members are. We know who finance board members are. There, you're a little more geographically distributed, I guess. Finance. Yeah. Um, we have. All parts of the town, I guess, represented or yeah, we do. covered. So, uh, I mean, highway is yeah. We know where Keith is. So, I, yeah, I was just say I haven't, I haven't memorized everybody's yeah. on the committee. So I'm going to go look up who's on the historic commission okay. on our website as we. And, and, and I guess one person I thought of for for at large has been involved in a lot of stuff for a number of years, and maybe he likes to participate more actively is uh, Mr. Dennehy. Oh, no. Right. Thank you. He, he, he'd be a great I'm a large story. member that could uh, I don't do well contribute. You, you know the town as well as anybody else. Mm -hmm. That would be an asset. Yeah. Think about it. You don't yeah. have to answer today. No, just, uh, you have to answer. Don't answer too oh, soon. No, don't answer, answer too well. soon. <laughs> You second it? No. Paul, you second that? Oh, I'll third it. Third it? <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, we've been trying to get him a long time. Well, okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to go to the East Wing. She's okay. on the yeah. Okay. Um, I don't actually know where Susan uh, lives either. Susan. But there, yeah. Nurse. And Alan McArdle is up on North Street too, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like North, North Street is very well represented yeah. here. But, uh, and Dawn is in the center of town. Yeah. So this is definitely center with a little bit of East Waitley yeah. in it on the Historic Commission. Um, look at the planning board. Dan, would you have a recommendation who we should look at, who we should invite? Or Paul, do you have any? I don't know Helena Farrell. Oh, no. Helena Farrell, she's on the planning board. I yeah. I, I don't know where this person lives, and I haven't asked him, but I know Larry Ashman was on the yeah. Conway Lake Streets. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he has some interest in the, well, he's working on the veterans. And I thought Sarah Cooper lived in East Wakely as well. She yeah. was on the planning board. Yeah. yeah. So this is for the streets committee, yeah. is it? Yeah. To, to prioritize streets. different highway projects, I guess, in town for funding. So uh, I oh. guess yeah. looking at the at the criteria they come up with and evaluating projects yeah. that are that are best helps the town, mm -hmm. and, and I guess best get funding as well. Yeah, maybe with the help of a planner from the Fur Cog. Yeah, so you just Fur Cog will do most, if not all of the yeah. work, and we're just going to tell them 
input. Yeah, the people are there for their input, I would assume. Right. That, I've worked on similar committees, not this exact one. Before. Anybody from the west side on, on there? Keith. Keith, yeah. Um, um, I'm, I'm just wondering if uh, Mr. maybe an at-large member, if Mr. Newland would be would, would like to get back into the fray. You know, I mean, he's, he's been out for a while. He's, yeah, he's probably um, happy. probably back to normal, <laughs> <laughs> happy, ready for some yeah, more. Maybe, maybe something that's stuff. not not a huge time commitment, but right. you know, yeah, that might that's a that's a good suggestion. Could be a fit because there's because. Certainly, the Planning Board and Historical uh, Commission are very heavily weighted towards the center of town, and there's a couple people from the east side yeah. of town. But um, so far, Keith is the only candidate so that might represent, or if rep represents, Keith probably not the right of, word, but. Keith's the gateway to the West. Yeah, I know. He's a gateway. <laughs> I think, what, you know, Westbrook Road, we are. Southern Whitley, honestly. Yeah, kind of. uh, you can tell from my accent. I can. <laughs> I can. Um, well, if we wanted somebody with construction background, contractors, you got you got some members on your finance. Isn't it? Is in town? Um, with, with construction experience. Doesn't he work for uh, Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. Drives trucks. Yeah. Dry, drives. I mean, he drives trucks. Okay. And, he, and he runs the farm. Yeah. You know. Uh, um, well, that would be good to have someone with the agricultural point of view I'll tell you as well. Who might, who might be interested in it? It's uh, Tommy's son, Mike. Uh, Mike is, um, you know, he has his own business up there with his brother and uh, he also runs helps run uh, the Maha farm mm -hmm. and I know he's going to kill me for saying this but uh, he's had some experience in writing up some proposals for um, um, you know, uh, grants for the for the farm and whatnot um, but I think, uh, and I think he he want to get in more involved in the town. So um, possibility. His last name was Valley. Maha. Maha. Uh, what about the east side of town? I, mean, I, th I think something like this is not a huge time commitment, right. and it's. I feel like one other thing we could do is help. You know, give somebody an opportunity to get involved, um, so that they you know kind of learn more about the town, maybe get more interested in what uh, what's going on, and just get more people involved. You know, that's badly needed. Yeah, and I think we, we there are people that. So I'm, folks. I'm just going to throw this name out there. I know he's retired. I know he jumps into um, various meetings, you know, um, town meetings. Um, seems to want to be more involved. I think we all know, well, I think we all know him, but it's George, George Kane. George Kane. Can, can, do you know George? I'm not sure I know him. George Kane lives at the very end of this road here. Oh, okay. Um, and George, um, no, I know he's retired, and he's, uh, um, I think he might yeah. might want something. And then what well, the commitment would be to get involved. meetings once a month for a few months. 
Um, do we know any more specific than a few months of the time frame? You never know. Um, you never know. No, the scope of work is just a few months. Yeah. Too much discovery. So it's just the plans. So it may start in yeah. March. It may start in, I don't know. Probably, fe um, probably February. Probably February. Yeah. So it be a couple of evenings, uh, two or three evenings, three probably evenings, February, March, April. Spent with planners and you know, friendly neighbors in a lovely, lovely conference room. Okay, so we'll uh, right. come up with Brian. We come up with some recommendations for next the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. So you come up with and if she, yeah. Is, is so it, for is it like worse? We got it. Do we? I mean, do we? Is it worth? Uh, Advertising on their website. Do you get any responses to that, or is it not, not, not really? Not usually. Yeah. Not usually. Okay. It's hard to get people to participate. Yeah. If people are very busy, or don't have the interest in participating. Uh, I guess for the select board, I, I would. I, I. I feel I'm committed enough, and I would. Right. This is going to say you've done a lot on yes. your plate, and either uh, Joyce or Jonathan from the select board. And this board is a. If this right. is really like a three uh, meeting uh, commitment, then. That's something I can fit in. So um, we can put me in that slot if that's. Uh, and then, of course, you know, if yeah, John will be here at the next meeting, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, if John he really, really wants it, I would step aside for yeah. it. But I suspect he might, he'll be okay with that. Yeah. Okay, moving on. New business. Uh, we have in here a petition by. Uh, Jock Incorporated for Pine Plains Estates to accept their streets as public ways. Yes. Um, and it, it has, there's a checklist that was included with our um, meeting materials. Yep. And I assume that he's done everything on this checklist. So this checklist, so right now we are at he has done step 1A. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the beginning of the process. So we're at the oh, very the beginning of the process. Oh, so this oh, is a okay. petition for the, to the select board to lay out the way as a town way. So tonight, the only action the select board would take if it were inclined to do so would be to vote in intention to lay out the way, which uh, is essentially a vote to refer it to the planning board for comment. The planning okay. board has 45 days from the date of um, the oh, referral okay. to provide a report back. Um, at that point, the selectman, um, and he has prepared um, uh, the plan. This is 1C here, although it's uh, not required yet. The, the right. plan is specifying the meets and bounds. Oh, so he it says selectmen have a plan prepared, but it sounds like he's, he's got the plan prepared. Yep. So, so that's what the previous pages. Um, in the right, because it's, 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 it's an existing mess. subdivision, so the plans are, have already been prepared. It's written as if as if you were going to construct a new road through a field or, or, or a new property. Okay. Um, and then the point of board has 45 days to refer the report back to the select board. Um, then, then, it, then the board has to give notice to um, any owners of land um, that are involved, and then we have a public hearing. And okay. Folks show up or don't show up, and then it would be, um, if you were inclined, it would be referred to the annual town meeting, yeah. or really any town meeting that. Right. Could be a special town meeting. Between now and then, where yeah. residents would be able to vote yay or nay as to whether the road should be laid out. In this case, whether the road should be accepted as a public way because it's already constructed. Does anybody so know a process. reason why there's like is there anything suspicious about these roads? Mike? I talked to Keith about it, and Keith is comfortable with okay. um, with the roads as constructed. What's the right of way? Is that 50 feet? I believe so. Because we're 55. What's the length of all of these? Do you have that information anywhere? have to get it from John. Because this is going to add, that, or as a benefit to our public road mileage for what, Chapter 90 funding? 
It will. And yeah. is there is there a, uh, a due date when they accept road mileage for the next Chapter 90 portion? I don't. I'm not sure. Because we, we already received it for this year, so we'll be looking at next what, starting next July, the chapter 90. Yeah, the road's 55. Uh, 55 feet wide. Yeah. Do you know, Paul? Is that when? Well, I don't. I I, I was just. It's, it's I a didn't French think they no updated mind. it. Yeah. I didn't think no. they updated it on a yearly yearly basis. Yeah. I, I think that because we went through this yeah. to find out how many miles of road we had yeah. in Waitley and. Keith had a number, and then when I went out to the state site, it was not the same number. So it, it's probably because they don't update what they have on a yearly basis. Maybe it's every two years. Maybe. We it would be on us to update it. Yeah. And then yeah. they certainly don't come out in yeah in measure. So and this is a matter of, of it looks to me like generously a, a third of a mile. Well. So, I mean, it's not, well, not that we shouldn't add on yeah, or anything, it but it probably isn't difference. relevant to the decision of no, no, but, whether to move forward. But if we need to make a decision by July 1, the next portion, or whatever the date is for updating mileage, if it's June 1 or something. I and know. at the latest, let's do, let's do ideally at the latest, this would, this would be brought up for a vote at the annual town meeting. Annual town meeting, which is yeah, annual. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing in terms of the Chapter 90 discussion, what's happening to, to small towns is and especially in small towns in Western Massachusetts, is that there's there's typically a set pot of money, and that's divided up between the municipalities based on your road mileage. So the right. the towns that are adding road mileage are getting a bigger share of that money, while the towns who aren't adding road mileage are getting a yeah. smaller share of the money. So it probably in the big picture it probably lessens our decrease a little bit. Right, but um, it, but it gives us more roads we have to take care of. Well, yep. So right. the dollars per mile of road are going down. I knew that. And was it going to go up? But the, the benefits probably of the, of the chapter 90 outweigh, I'm guessing, yep. the maintenance costs. And so. Yeah, and, and, I th and I think we just we should we should be taking care. It's effectively going to be yeah. a public road. I don't see any reason to delay this. So if we're no. just kicking off step one, um, I don't see any reason to delay at all. So, so we will move yeah. to uh, intend to lay out the way and I'd like to refer this then to the planning board. That's the motion. So the ways are, just to be specific, Green Oak Lane, Francis Way, and Eastwood Lane. Yes. On, right, as uh, shown on the As shown on the maps we have here. Uh, or Gray Oak Lane. Yeah, Gray Oak Lane. Okay, I'll second the motion. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. What step in this process would, uh, would oh, okay, that's okay, sorry, okay. Yeah, so okay, next call it. okay. Uh, next uh, item is Chapter 61, conversion of land to ineligible use. Way of the assessor's map 20, lot 22, Jeffrey Coca and Shelly Coca, the property owners. So there was a letter received December 9th, 2017. It was um, noticed to the town and several other boards that a portion of the land on that property is being converted to an ineligible use. Uh -huh. It's approximately 11, approximately 11 acres would be taken out of, are being taken out of Chapter 61A um, and converted to an ineligible use. The land's not being sold um, when they're, um, when the land is taken, when the land is converted and sold, um, the town has a right of first refusal and it has typically, I think it's 120 days to exercise a right of first refusal. When it's taken out of, um, when it's converted to an ineligible use, but not being sold, the, the window for the town to exercise its right to purchase is, is, is much shorter. I believe it's 30 days. Um, 
30 days from, from the date of the notice. So 30 days from December 17th, we would have to let uh, the property owners know that the, the town wished to exercise its right of first refusal um, to purchase the property. So that's really the question. I, yeah. I, Fred was telling me that there was some questions with the assessors about about the size of the property that's being taken out. Um, but really the issue for, for, for the board tonight is whether there's any interest in the town. And, yeah, and my understanding is this is part of one of the two Nexant projects that we've just negotiated pilots for. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And taking it out of chapter, they have to go back five years and pay taxes if it, as if it wasn't in chapter. So the town gained some. Yeah. Revenue that way. Actually, yeah. I don't see any reason so. to hold this up. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't either. I motion that we accept this. Uh, second. Or, or or don't have interest. I guess. Yeah. 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 We we don't want to take no action. Yeah. Take that. no action. Take no we'll action. Okay. Pass on our right of first refusal. Okay. Moving on. Inspection reports. Closed landfill and stumped up. So last time. We signed a, this will look familiar, an inspection report that was performed by Franklin County Solid Waste District for the transfer station. And these are for the, um, just for Fred? For the closed landfill, yeah, just for Fred. And uh, what we refer to as, what I've been told we refer to it as the stump dump. Um, and there were no, there were, the. The results of the inspections were excellent. Oh, no I, don't know if, I don't know if she used the word excellent, but there were no findings, so were, yeah. that's excellent. All right. Okay, moving on. Approval of mileage reimbursement rate for 2018. So in January, the board typically um, votes the mileage, um, the mileage reimbursement for um, eligible expenses for town employees. And in the past, they've adopted the, the standard IRS mileage rate, which is, which for 2018 is 54.5 cents per mile. And you know, a lot of controversy there. But no, I, uh, I don't see any reason to change. We've, not, we've always done that rate. I don't see a compelling reason to change that. Do you have more discussion? No. I move we accept no, that. I have no, no problem with that. Okay, second that. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, campaign and political finance reporting. Oh. Yeah. Sign. Yeah. Start the. Okay. Start this. Next item, moving on. ABCC reporting, seasonal population increase. Sign here. Um, this is just a form that's required by the ABCC that town signs every year. It identifies okay. if there's no seasonal popu population increase. Oh, oh okay. Because the population does affect how many liquor licenses you have or something? And related to that is a renewal certification, which says everybody renewed their license. Okay. And that you didn't, and that you didn't reject any licenses. aggregation letter from FERCOM. So we, the town received a letter from FERCOG and it is um, trying to determine which towns are interested in aggregating the electricity of residents and businesses within the town. I, I think, Joyce, you oh. probably have a better 
yeah. understanding of me because then I, in terms of HCOG, I tried to do it a while back. I don't know if the town of Whaley right. was involved in that or not, but it was a, the effort was not successful because DEQ mm -hmm. did not do <coughs> Yeah, certain yeah. aspects of the program, and I don't. Rem I think we had a lot of questions about it. I don't remember if we actually were going to opt into it or not. Um, I don't think we ever did. Well, I don't think we did though. I don't, I'm, I remember we had a lot of questions though. Yes. And, uh, is this something we would punt to the energy committee, or is, does the board itself want to explore this, or do we not want to explore? <coughs> uh, we, I think we want to proceed with this. A little input from the energy committee might be a good idea because they've also um, we probably should ask them if, to follow up on the uh, the solar project in Agawam that was going to guarantee us 11 and a half Chicken cents of solar. Chicken Chicken sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, given that we might not need to buy a lot on the regular market but it might be that aggregating is going to be a, a good way to get a better rate there so it might be some input from the energy committee might help us make a decision. But, but this is for residents. The Chicopee one was for. Oh, that's residents. for the. Oh, oh, oh sorry. This is for residents. Sorry, I think you get this is for the town. The only one for the town is is next hand that's being proposed. Yeah. Uh, I guess one one question I had if we if we okay, you can. It doesn't cost you anything to say you're interested, and. They're going to, based on, on how many towns or how many users are interested, come up with a rate that they can that they negotiate with whatever utility companies they want. I guess if we're interested and we do that, we don't like the rate, can we back out, or are we committed then? Because I, I mean, you're committing to a, a blind number right, right. now. Right. Well, okay. One of the reasons it's a little confusing is because under, under conclusions, it does talk about municipal aggregation. All the towns go out to bid for electricity supply at the same time. I don't think we don't go out for bid for the residents' rate. The residents no. get whatever the heck they get. But, um, that, so this does seem to be at least a little bit. Right, but you, you don't like say, up in, yeah. you don't know what you're getting into, and it, can you can you back out later on if it's higher than if residents are saying? Well, I'm paying say ten cents today, and they're saying, well, it's eleven point six. That's the best you're going to do. Yeah, we're we're really not doing a I service mean, to the residents. I feel like I need more information, but maybe they're not at the point where they're, they're at the point where they're just trying to they're just trying to gauge interest. I'd say yeah. we're yeah. interested in more information. Okay. But if they, but we're, we don't feel like we know enough to, to tell them whether we're predisposed positively or negatively towards it. You know they Does that seem to? Yeah. 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 So um, my understanding is that if the town, if the town opts in, I believe it's, a, I believe it's a town meeting vote that we need to take to municipal to aggregate the electricity, yeah. and it would be for residents. It would be for residents and commercial. They would have a res. So that would become kind of the default for residents oh, yeah, and businesses means, within the town, and then they would have an opportunity to opt out right. if they weren't happy with the rates. And then that was one of the things that, that John, in the last, previous discussions, the one thing I remember because it was repeated so many times was that he wanted a program where people opt in rather than opt out. And it's all coming back now, right? Yeah, it's this all is, coming back in ways This is the same ways. thing, you're, you're in unless you opt out. It's right. gonna, it's gonna, it's, it will likely be the same discussion it that was, you had years ago. It's okay. that instead of HCOG, it's gonna be FERCOG. So just insert yeah. the. Well, they, they want it. The last page talks about an answer by the 19th. Well, they want an answer. Well, I, 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 so, that's so to me, the, the question I think they're asking, I think they're asking is, are you interested support. in more information? And, and that. Yeah. So yes, we're not we're not committing to anything. If you're not really committing to, to join, I guess, yeah. I'd yeah. say, yeah, we're interested in more information. If this is something that can really save people money, that would be great. Uh, but they haven't given us enough information to know if that would be the case. So that's. But I think it'd be unreasonable if they gave us this and said, "Yeah, you want to join?" <laughs> There's not a right. number here. Yeah. I mean, the letter in the beginning it does say you'd like more. This is from a 
with Bhatia. I'm available to meet with you if you'd like to discuss your potential participation prior to making a decision. Well, unless they have numbers, I guess I, I, I don't know what you can tell them we're discuss. interested in more information. And do, do we have a meeting before the 19th? Or no. No, 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 no. And I, I suspect the 19th is this. Soft now deadline. I have a soft deadline. Okay. okay. Otto is looking at this heavily the same. I know, there. and John O'Rourke was actually running a company that was right. trying to do this, and I don't think that ever got anywhere no. either. The and, other, the other thing that Conway liked was apparently part of the program is you can opt into 10% renewables, 20% renewables, et cetera, et cetera. But is it, is it Greenfield and is it Montego Arch have their own energy programs too or something? Yeah, I think Greenfield does. Greenfield, but there's one other one out there. Well, that might be an energy committee. We should probably give them a heads up. Uh, who's, who's on our energy committee? Uh, Nat, Fortune, John. John. Um, there's one other person, Paul, Paul Newland. Okay. Okay. So Brian will respond accordingly. Okay. Uh, next item is fiscal year 19 budget planning. Yeah, and, and there's nothing in my package. Nope. Yeah. You have any yet, so that's good, right? Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, and don't talk any bad about the finance committee. Oh, I would never. Oh, right here. Finance committee. Are they here? Well, I got to change my notes now. What I can say. We're, we're here, folks. Oh, okay. Um, hey, you're here for us. So the question is: Last year we did um, joint meetings with the finance committee. Um, is that something we would like to continue? I'd say, did from, you, did from, you from find it productive? Courts? Did you find that it you? ultimately saved from, us time? If you have any comments yeah. as well. I think it was productive, especially at the time when you have various departments coming in and explaining their individual budgets. Number one, they didn't have to do it twice. They didn't have to do it for two yeah. committees. They, they, they could do it at one time. And it also allowed us to converse about that specific budget at that time. So um, I think in the long run, it probably answered things yeah. faster. Because my understanding, what I recall from previously when we weren't meeting together was that uh, Lynn or a Mark, whoever was the town administrator, would just update the select board on what had happened. Right. Which for me at the time, because I was filming all of your meetings, I already knew what happened to the meetings. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it was a, it, and it seems like you don't necessarily get the same thing out of a summary as you might get out of being at the meeting. So it would actually take a little time out of our agenda here, it would make our meetings that we don't meet with, the, when we don't meet with the Finance Committee, it would make those meetings probably shorter or more uh, uh, more efficient maybe. Yeah. I don't so, think it has to be every meeting, but I, I, I think it should be the key meetings. The ones where people are presenting budgets, you say? Are there any yeah. others that? Um, uh, well, we, we met a couple times out, well, a couple, but a few times outside the budget, deciding how to fund the town hall. Say we had several right. meetings on that. Right. They weren't just right. a budget item, yeah. an annual budget. But yeah. so there was that kind of, that we had. Uh, but like your preliminary meeting, probably. Right? Now you have one yeah, coming up. In, you have one coming up in two weeks or something. Right. Right. Yeah. That one That's was right. probably People not going to be a, a joint meeting at this point. Yeah. That's going to kind of set the stage for. Right. We'll have the same discussion about yeah. here's our schedule, what do we think about the schedule, mm -hmm. how do we want it. So right. this is probably going to be two or three joint meetings? Probably. Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. That doesn't problem. sound unreasonable Suffice. to me. I know it, it's always busy, right? right, in the budget season. Right. So and it adds meetings to it. It adds meetings. It doesn't add meetings to their calendar, it adds meetings to your calendar. Right. So. And you're, are we still scheduling them on the Wednesdays opposite of uh, selectmen's meetings? I think we have been. Yeah, it's yeah it's that's what we have been doing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, I don't remember what we did last year. But. Yeah. 
nobody likes back to back meetings, of course, but they happen sometimes. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's something if we, if we want to try for, we can do. Okay. How, how are you proceeding so far, Brian, on the, on the budget? Are you getting responses from? Well, they're due. To everybody, or? I'll give people the benefit of the doubt. They're due January 16th. Okay. So they're not through yet. I have a handful of them. Okay. Handful. So okay. next Tuesday. Okay. Next Tuesday. So Next the, Tuesday. The way the 250 people better get their papers in. That's yeah. that's my soft hard deadline. Okay. Um, Brian, yeah, Brian also minutes. was very proactive in getting a letter out to Frontier um, as well as well Wakey obviously uh, informing them that we need the budget. How? Yeah. Brian, what, what was the time frame on that? We need their budget. Uh, the full budget, that's the key word, the full budget. We had the summary, we yeah. didn't have the full budget. But the full budget was provided at least the night weeks. of the meeting. Yeah. So it was kind of, yeah. it is. Well, it's cool so we asked for 14 days. It's this morning, right? right? I think they've been meeting this week. Now, I don't know what stage of the budget they are. But well, I, I heard care. they had the preliminary review of it. Right. That almost always January's meeting. Yeah. This is what you know when you've been behind the camera at FCAT, which if anybody wants to be a volunteer to be behind the camera at FCAT, that's another great way to learn about the town. But January meeting was almost entirely devoted to running through the preliminary budget. And that would be true at all of the elementaries and Frontier yeah. as well. So if they haven't had the meeting at Frontier yet, Maybe, but usually Waitley was one of the first yeah. to, to meet for their uh, regular school committee. And we met, the finance committee met once with the school committee over the summer, yeah. and there's there's also been communication back and forth about uh, a joint, another joint finance committee and school committee meeting to, mm -hmm. to review the budget um, yeah. in greater detail. There just was an ample opportunity last time because not only did we get the Full budget that night, but the public hearing was two days later. Um, yeah, it just wasn't a great job at scheduling. So um, it's it's obvious it's not a two-way street. And they also their their schedule was was so odd. Their public hearing was in March. Yeah, their March school committee meeting, which was a little yeah. odd, but you know. And there's never a meeting on their side regarding budget attainment like at some point in the year. Like anyone who runs a significant budget has, has points in the year where you look at where you are relative to that budget in terms of expenditures, in terms of income, et cetera. It's none of that. It's just all downloaded at the end. Oh, well, no, that was not my experience. When I was going to school committee meetings, it was always a part of the um, the financial manager's report was how close they were on this year's budget. Were they ahead? Were they behind? And which accounts? And the school committee got a report of it, but I don't think they sent it to the finance committee. No. But I think they gave it to the school committee. Wow. But uh, so so the information exists. They do look that. at that though. So that's Paul, for sure. Let me ask you: Does Waitley do that? Does our finance committee do you look mid year during the year how are we doing on our budget? Yeah, we got this guy. And I'm that, asking you. I'm asking you. I'm asking finance committee. Does the finance, finance committee, committee do does, that? No. And the reason for that is because the responsibility of the finance committee is to construct the budget for the town. And there's no finance committee. How do I want to put this? Uh, there is no. There, there, there is no formal finance committee unless the finance committee is sitting right around that table. So that would mean that we would be, we, we would need the town accountant in at that time, and the town accountant sends us updates on a monthly basis as to where things are with individual budgets, but it doesn't go through the whole thing, which is kind of frustrating as well. So um, we should probably do that. Um, 
but we don't do it because it's, it's going to take more meetings to have the finance committee there and it's not a construction it's not a meeting of construction it's a meeting of looking back uh, and really that's that's one of the functions of, of the school committee is yeah, yeah. Um, but it's very hard to uh, it's very hard to understand or to uh, to challenge anybody in that arena in that school arena unless you have the knowledge yourself as to how their budgets are performing. Well, why don't we, if, if we really want that information, we can ask the school committee to give it to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they get the information every month. It's in written form. Um, it's a little spreadsheet. Occasionally, mm -hmm. certain people, when they were on the school committee, would find mistakes in the spreadsheet and would point them out. But not very often. There were very few mistakes. And they, they actually have good accountants. And they, they, they knew kind of where they stood. And I remember at different discussions where everything is about where it's supposed to be, oh, except this one is a little overspent because we knew this was going to be a big expense in January and that we're not going to have a lot more to do with that. And I think they, they were very specific about which places in the budget they were on track. And if anything looked like it was going to go over, they would talk about, do, do we, could we trim something from here to pay for that and so on. Yeah. So, so I remember those discussions at school committee meetings. So I know it's available for the school. Is our town accountant willing to format our? Is he the one that does it? Oh, well, he presumably it's the person taking who sees things coming in. I, I don't know who exactly, but it was their financial manager, it was Don Scott most of the time, and then the new person, Patty, for the so school committee. We're we talking sure Frontier, or we're talking Patty Frontier, or Waitley, or both. Well, both, but. We're more concerned with Waitley. With Waitley, the, the Waitley the town or Waitley the elementary? Waitley the elementary school. The elementary school. Okay. Yeah. They, I, I, I've seen that discussion happen so many times. I, I would not be hard to believe that they, they've not done it uh, in the last year or two when I've not been going to school. Well, yeah, yeah, we should. Then, then, Brian, we should try to get that information to the finance so that um, we're not starting from square one every time they come in front of us for that explanation. But I remember there was, there was a recommendation from this board before I joined here that the board would meet with the school committee during budget season and we would, this board would go to their meetings and they would come to ours. I guess I don't think that ever happened. That was before my uh, time I, here on the yeah. board. I, I don't know, but when I was on this board, I went to the school committee meetings. Oh, you did? Well. Okay. Sometimes okay. because I was behind the camera, but sometimes just because it was date night and yeah. I was going, okay. But yeah. since you <laughs> left and I joined, we haven't done that. Yeah, for the last couple of years, I don't think we've had. A well, it's hard to do. it's 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 hard it's hard to create extra meetings right for people that are going to meetings on a regular right. basis right. anyway. Yeah. So but going to one of the school committee meeting, that's that's doable. Yeah. And in the budget season that that might be good. But it might be that the better joint meeting is to have when the school comes to the finance committee anyways that we be there. Yep. That might be the more efficient way to use it. Oh, we time. need that information before we get together so that as a finance committee we can understand which areas we need to address in terms of the value that our tax dollars yeah. are being spent at the elementary level or even at the high school level. And that's, that's the key, um, to be able to work with them. And uh, so, if we get that info, it'd be good. Yep. Okay, Mr. Nelson, budget? January 16th. Okay, moving on, uh, town administrator updates? Well, Jonathan was here, I couldn't have any, so. Yeah, we'll let you have them. All right. 
Um, oh, this is a big one. It's, it's, it's really tough. Oh. Um, health insurance. Oh, is that one of the issues that we got something on that now? Um, so, Wins are representative to the, the, the insurance trust, and they had to meet this afternoon. And she came back with um, rates for the upcoming year. Um, this afternoon, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. Yeah. And we haven't done any analysis on them. We also have um, quotes from Maya, so we should be able to so put it together. So, just that that's the uh, Hampshire. Uh, Hampshire County Group Insurance group Trust, yeah. Yeah. Okay. and that's who we currently purchase insurance through. As you as you recall, yeah. we made plan changes. But that was the nine percent or four and a half percent. So it, it's looking like without the plan changes, it would have been nine a nine percent premium increase. Mm -hmm. But with the changes, um, it's right around four and a half percent increase in premiums. They vary a little bit depending on the plan, but we're talking tenths of a percentage point. So let's just say four and a half for our purposes tonight. Okay. Um, and we also had discussions with with a representative from Maya who provided us um, mm -hmm. with yeah. some quotes. Those are really the, the two big players, almost pretty much the two only players, um, are, are the, the group insurance trust um, Maya, or something called the GIC, that's the state, yeah. um, that's the state uh, insurance program. Um, we've never really worked with them because the rates were always higher it's, yeah, than what we could get from the Hampshire group. They, and, right, and they typically are, yeah. is my understanding. Um, so we need to do some analysis on the rates, and we really need to put our heads together to figure out how we want to uh, go about this because if we go if we go with if we stay with the Hampshire um, trust then we need to go through the state process you know we need to go through the state mandated process of um, yeah. working with the unions and calculating savings and making sure you know savings are passed on and this whole process without getting into too much detail so um, oh, so I'm wondering if, if I almost feel like this should be a separate meeting, apart from our meeting on January 31st. Um, are you guys willing to be separately at some point? We Jan can coordinate. January is a good time for me because school doesn't really get started until the 20 something. Okay. So what would, what would be meeting? Yeah. Well, it would be a select board meeting with myself and Lynn. Okay. Um, and I, really I can actually be flexible enough to be during the day for depending on the day. Yeah, we really need to get down into the details about, about okay. what the options are. And, um, quite honestly, I don't think there's going to be a right answer. Um, well, there's going to be different decisions will have different risks and different uh, sort of different impacts impacts on people. Yep. Right? So I remember the Maya one was a little risky because even though the rate was smaller now, it could take a big bump. Uh, in the second or third year, right. and that, so there's a risk there that isn't there with the others. But yeah, yeah. you're right. It, there's enough details that we probably can't uh, do enough with them yeah. here. Uh, so I'll try. To, I'll, I'll coordinate that with by email, so that way we can get figure out which when Jonathan's available to. Okay. Uh, that's on the plan. That sounds like a reasonable plan to me. I'd say next week if possible. Earlier is better, I think, on that. Certainly for me, because as, as we approach the first day of school, which is the 25th, I start getting much busier. Um, but uh, uh, up through the 24th, I've got a lot more flexibility. Okay. Should we set a tentative date, maybe the 24th or something? And one week before our next meeting. Yeah. So Jonathan yeah. is was the alpha or finance committee is twenty third, right? Third. Yep. Yeah. So twenty fourth is possible. And if not, we can talk about a different date. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then let's let's set that as a tentative. Do you have a time. I actually. Yeah, you guys prefer. Six. 
earlier. Yeah. I, don't know I, I can actually go earlier on that particular day. Um, but uh, I think we should say six just because that's, but it, 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 that means Lynn, if we, if we can start earlier, let's try to start earlier, but uh, let's say six for now and hope that we can maybe do a little earlier. Because if we're really going to have to get into the details, then that we're going to get foggy at about, I don't know, 6.30 or so, which is when we start making right. questionable decisions. Five. Can you read five, four? Yeah, I don't know how many classes that day. Classes start the next day. And I just don't have any meetings scheduled for that day. I'm sure something will come up, yeah. uh, but I'll try to make those be in the morning. So, you know, I, could, I think I could get out of there easily by four. Or for a four o'clock meeting here, probably. Okay. Do I see if you can make five? John, can you make five? Five. I'm trying to five? Okay. Okay, you let us know. Okay. Okay. And that's likely to be a two hour meeting, though, it sounds like. If, uh, I think it could be a little while. Down for two hours. Oh, you, you invite Lynn, and, and we've also had somebody from the school here. Other meetings, are you are you invite them as well? Um, we'll have to think about it. It'll be it'll be a meeting. It'll be a it'll meeting. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Want, want to come? Um, <coughs> it's it's really up to you as to how much input you want from. Well, I think it, it, folks. Whatever we choose, we have to go through the process with the union. So it's probably better to have that input earlier rather than later, and then rather than having to re-explain everything again, <laughs> that might be uh, might be a good idea to, to give a heads up to say, look, we've gathered the information now, and we, this is the time we're going to be discussing it. Let's right. come and listen and tell us what you think. I know Jonathan is big about inviting the school. Other discussions we've had, he wanted to make sure they were aware of it. Right, because I think because that's that's the first step in getting folks on board. If they understand what the choices really are, then they're much more likely to be cooperative. Okay. Okay. And obviously, the finance committee is welcome to attend. Yeah. yeah. I think we should. We should you like back to backs, right? You like back-to-back -back meetings? <laughs> I, I, I personally enjoy them. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I think we should have pizza this week. What day is this? Wednesday. 24th. 24th. It's the day after our finance committee meeting. Please. So. Get a ball book. We can find somebody. Uh, yeah. Okay, what else you got? Um, we're still trying to slog through Poplar, the Poplar Hill Road. That probably goes back. Oh, it goes yeah. back. Oh, um, oh my gosh. Probably goes back a while. Eight years, ten years, probably um, more. So we have a meeting scheduled with, um, his name's Roger Mosier. Um, I think he's the, the VP of Finance with Smith College. Uh -huh. um, and he's going to be meeting with Keith and I. Um, we've had ongoing discussions with, um, I forget, I don't remember his last name, Reed somebody. Oh, um, Reed, uh, yeah, uh, yeah but I, Reed Bertone is his last yes, name. Yes, Reed Bertone. The hyphenated pain in the butt last name. Um, and I say that as someone who has hyphenated yes. pain in the butt last name. Um, so they punt, I, I think he may have left Smith, and there's somebody else now. Oh. Anyways, maybe that's not right, but um, it's been, the issue has been punted up um, one level, um, so we're going to have discussions about um, Poplar Hill Road. There's obviously the property boundary issues that are occurring with the town and public right away, and the neighbors, and nobody owns what they think they own or what they thought they own. And um, hopefully, this is steps forward to putting it to bed. Looks like he's still at Smith, but he's no longer in the position of running the uh, uh, 
the back field of the station. Center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that's happening um, next week. Hopefully, I'll have something to report. We're still investigating the best way forward with the sprinkler system at the school. Um, we have a meeting on Friday. It was supposed to happen last week, but it got snowed out. We're going to meet this Friday with the sprinkler company for a second opinion as to how to best investigate it. Um, the likely path forward here is that the additional investigation would happen during February break, regardless of who does it, uh, because the students won't be in the building. And it'll be a lot easier to, to give somebody full reign in the building um, to investigate um, the issues there. Do so. you know why we have custom sprinkler heads there? Um, I didn't catch why. I believe it's the same for all, I could be wrong, I believe it's the same for all dry sprinklers because they need to be pitched in order to drain. Whether they were pitched right or not is a different story. But they need to be pitched so you have a pitched pipe in a straight roof, uh, a straight drop ceiling. So the one here needs to be longer than the one here. So each of them are different lengths. So I need replacement of, so the sprinkler, the sprinkler head, whatever kind they chose to use at the time, yeah. requires that all different lengths is what I was told. So we know custom means cheaper, so. <laughs> Well, the head's along, but what the number was 37,000. I'm not comfortable with that number because I'm not sure that that may have been a generic calculation of sprinkler head cost X, yeah. standard sprinkler head cost X, and we need 180 of them. Um, my feeling is that's how that number came about, but I'm not positive, so I'm not comfortable with, with that number. So we'll find out a lot more um, once we do the internal inspection. Um, we talked a little bit about the Nexian pilot agreement. That's a town, or we're waiting for town council to review it. Um, I'll give them a nudge to let's wrap that up hopefully for January 1st. Yeah. Um, another. This is the theme is projects that are taking forever. Manganese filtration project. Um, after several emails requesting an update, I finally heard back from the engineers in regards to the manganese filtration project. Okay. Which seems to be taking forever. Um, they're almost done with the final specifications and they're seeking permission from MassDEP um, for permission to put the project out to bid. Um, so. I don't want to put a timeline on it, but especially when mass DEP is involved, yeah. no offense to anybody, but it seems to take longer when yeah. state agencies are involved. Um, hopefully that will go out to bid. Let's be optimistic and say the next couple months. Okay. Um, and hopefully that will. Um, then it goes in, it's got to be in the warmer weather, right? Something like that will be constructed and um, installed? I, I think they can do it. Most of most of it will be done inside the uh, oh. existing pump house. Okay, interior. Or the the our pump house would not be expanded. Right. Uh, there may be an, uh, a small addition that's going on um, uh -huh. um, to separate the chlorine storage from the new electronics that we're putting oh. inside the inside the pump house. Because as we know, chlorine and electronics chlorine and don't really metals in general yes. do not mix. don't mix very well. Uh, mix quite well, but. <laughs> It doesn't and produce, and produce oxide. Yes, it it's doesn't. Like it doesn't work well for electronics. Um, I almost forgot. Uh, Janet, I almost forgot. Sunderland 300th parade. We had a question last time we talked about the scope of. of well, well, last time we talked about if the town wanted to participate, and the answer was yes. And they're looking for a little more information as to how we want to participate. Is that right? They want to know I, we are, what they're looking for is are we going to um, put a, a float in? And so I'm just, just going to get a funny hat and glasses <laughs> and walk. Or but, are we just going to be more And they're they're contacting correct me from they're contacting the fire department and police department separately, right? Yes. To participate. So. So this is you. The big so toys will be there. The store it's commission. It's really of what the of what the. Like, Carry that flag. Select is the select board is on the market. Can you play an instrument? You know, no. I have kids who can do that. But. 
So the question I, is flow. I guess flow or no flow. Flow or no flow. Well, I, I mean, I, you. I you know, would have to build the flow, or you would have to build the flow. Yeah, Brian and I already had that discussion. Where is, we're not you're not flowers. building. Is, is anybody coordinating what would come from the town for that celebration? No. Or is, so is right now, there's just nothing. going to show up and say we're in it. Um, just ride on the fire. Truck. Well, I'm. I have well, to fill out an coordinating. application. Yeah. So that they've sent us an application, and I need to fill it out, letting oh, okay. them know if we are or are not going to enter a float, and then they need the particulars about it. I spoke with Adelia Bardwell, who had the float in the Conway Parade, I guess, and it was a small. That was the Historical Society thing. I think so. So, it, but it went in for the town. It was a small version of the milk bottle. Yeah. But that. That flow, my understanding is that that float is now in New Hampshire. I think she said somebody bought it. So if someone could go up and get it, she said she's she's too old to do this anymore. She's not they coming up to New Hampshire. We can rent it, you're saying. I guess. We could contact him, and there's a possibility that we could rent, borrow it. it would, someone would need to go to New Hampshire and bring it back. She wasn't sure. It was sort of a um, a quicker put together, and she wasn't sure if something more should be done. But it is what we did with Conway. She said so. It could be done again for. Um, so there's a possibility of that of something, but it would need to be arranged. And if not that, do you want to float? And if you don't want to float, then I will just let them know that we'll just have people walking. And the full size goes no We're going to move it anyway. You have a suggestion, Paul? My suggestion is that. We take this topic to our 250th committee uh -huh. individuals because there may come a time when we we're asking Sunderland yeah. to come back and so maybe there's a group there that would be up to putting a float together to go to Sunderland and we could use it again when our own 250th hit. Sunday, I brought this up at one of the 250th meetings, had a special session with some float builder, invited in town to come and see how the bill floats. Uh, no, I don't yeah, think, I think I saw the email yeah, for that, was interesting. Yeah. But does anybody, I, I know the answer is, does anybody here remember what we did for our last one in 71? What kind of float did the town have? I remember the one float, I don't know if we had any others. I, I wasn't here. I was we had a log cabin on a trailer. <clears throat> and it had, it had tobacco in there and corn and I don't know, Dan, were you around then or not? I was, but and we, I've we seen took pictures of Dan in yeah. the <laughs> and, yes, and we took we took I that float to, it all. to <laughs> all the surrounding towns that, that had a celebration. Yeah. Either before or after us. Mm -hmm. And that ended up on uh, I know where it ended up on Straits Road at some playhouse for children oh, until right. it deteriorated yeah. and it's no longer yeah. gone. Yeah. But yeah, there was a, a committee that put that together. Yeah. Well, uh, we still have paper mache animals. Some of them quite large made it the after school program at the elementary school. Now it seems like that'd be a big project to ask the, an after school teacher to, <laughs> to, to take on excellent. making a big paper mache <coughs> bottle to put on a float. It'd be an excellent team building kickoff 250th committee uh, you exercise. Can, you get the right committee there. To, I don't know about the, I don't have enough know-how to commit to making a float, but I can pick the shape of the best of them. I know there are individuals in that committee who are very handy with the hammer and nail. So, so the committee, Sunderland's committee is looking for a response that would have appreciated it before the holidays, yeah. but um, I said that I would need to bring it again to this this meeting. So the, the, the other, the other and she also understood that it all takes a long time. Right. Yeah. I think our next meeting isn't until the 21st for, no, uh, no that's, that's personnel. Um, What's your next meeting for 250? For 250, um, I think it was a Wednesday. Uh, it was six weeks from the previous uh, 
No, the, yeah, I'll, I'll find it at some point. The, the, the one group that, that you know, supposedly does, does a lot, and, and not a group, I should say, but the one, you know, I call it a group of people, I, I guess, or a profession that does a lot and lately is, is the agriculture. I mean, you've got all these greenhouses and farmers here. Right. It's, yeah. you know, put together a display of what's yeah. grown in Whaley. Sure. What do all these greenhouses do with all these fluorescent pink lights every night? Don't ask. <laughs> 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 That's I mean, another they have, yeah, they're All we know is free cash, cash is very active. Yeah, they would have resources to, to do that if they're into the, I would assume they would, you know. And there is quite a few of them on a large scale. We even there's quite a few on yeah. sure. not to be specific like Fred, on wants, Road. Fred wants to build a float. I, um, I think something should be done now. But so can we give uh, them a solid maybe? We should have taken the old stair tower and made it into a float from the town hall. Yeah, good of yeah. The old what? The old stair tower we took off. Or the old barn, the highway barn that we <laughs> got rid of. <laughs> you know, if we could just uh, loosen the milk bottle from its foundation, yeah. but then, lift uh, it on That should up. be really, that, that's no trick. Yeah. That's no trick at all, really, is it? <laughs> it's going to be moved probably yeah. eventually, so. <laughs> it's hefty. Army Corps of Engineers moved the last time. Yeah. Did they move? Yeah. Well, or even, well, Yankee Candle's not only Whaley, but Deerfield, I guess. But. Oh, yeah. a float made of wax. Yeah. A large candle. <laughs> oh, they've got those big tanks of it. It won't melt really? in the middle of July. No. <laughs> It'll get soft, but so that'll be good. more comfortable. And we had one Marilot there before, I think. I don't know what they did, but... Cabinets. Yeah, I don't know if they had anything in the parade or not. No, they were at the after party. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Well, sounds like a solid maybe. And I think maybe. I, I think... Where? And... Uh, there isn't a maybe on the application. Are, are other towns submitting floats to the sun I can ask. I imagine. Can you find so. that out? Yes. Yeah. I'm not seeing when the. Oh, here it is. The 12th. February 12th is the next. Wait, the 250th meeting. Oh, so that's this week, right? February 12th. February. Oh. That was. Okay. We said meeting uh, okay. last week. You know, maybe all this spare plastic pellets we've got in the back, we could make a big can. Yeah. Okay. Or make a milk bottle. Or make a milk bottle. Make a nice film, old man. We got yeah. tons of it out there. You just need the form to melt it into. You want to make the form for him? Are you saying? I think uh, Dan's the head of the uh, float committee. Dan yeah. Dan is the excellent. head of the Waitley float committee. Yeah. Okay, I'm writing it down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe we should put the request down, I guess, on the, yes. their audience. Anybody interested in building a float and whatever kind of float they come up with to talk to Jan yep. or Brian here People within the with next all, uh, week or two. With all levels of skill. If you don't yeah. know how to build the actual mechanical structure, assume that somebody else will be able to do that and then right. need help with you know, things that you can that you might be able to contribute. we got plenty of tractors to pull them. Uh, we'll yeah. I don't think tractors are too hard to come by no. in this town. Yeah. Are they just want asking flow, or are they asking for? They were the application yeah. specifically was for a flow, flow because okay. they need to be able to plan. And okay. If you're looking for a reimbursement, at least we get a tractor and how many? Hey, wagon. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It could Finance be that simple. It could be a tractor. tractor with a hay wagon yeah. with different vegetables or things that are yeah. grown in the town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, as a non-tractor and non-hay wagon owner, got new I can't commit it, but I, let's put it out there. Tractor and hay wagon owners. How about a giant strawberry? You just gave the guy the permit. Permit, yeah. yeah. Well, he's one yeah. of the, the oh, big farmers. We should put that in, town, in the yeah. permit. Can we put that in the permit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Condition I'd like to change my motion. We need a float. Well, if you had a float, if you had a float, as you said, with hay bales on it, in every farm in town, regardless of what they grew, yeah. they have an agricultural side to their business, yes. had some kind of large sign with a stake, and we put it in all the hay bales, so you can see that Waitley was yeah. comprised of, you know, numerous yeah. agricultural um, 
Yeah, Plus, it's advertising for those. Plus, it's advertising yeah. for them. We need six and, floats, though. And then we can even put a plastic. A non-farm could be up there. You can yeah. the signs, then it's. Yeah. Maybe we can get that potato that they have on TV that travels around the country. Is it a potato or a hot dog? Yeah. No, potato. Potato? potato. 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 Well, Dan, because you're yeah. chairing the float committee now, <laughs> I think that would be on your plate to figure out how to get, how to get that. Potatoes, so. strawberries, all sorts of stuff, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I it could be something very simple that would, like you said, represent all of the interests oh, of way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Towards, we say, yeah. yes. And you could well, get them all on one float because if you had them, you know, staggered, sure. you, could, you could have quite a few. And kids could be throwing strawberries out at people. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking sure. hard vegetables. Yeah, that's strawberry but... time, June, yeah. <laughs> Potatoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so. All right, well, uh, I think then the, the way to put in a maybe is to say, yeah, I think so. And then if it turns, if we get to this meeting and, or, you know, in the meantime. If someone can't not, come up with something that's more elaborate, that could be the absolute backup plan. Is to do, uh, Except that we still don't actually have someone who owns a tractor and a hay wagon who's willing to do this. I mean, right. But I think can, can we, that's that's a, those are the details. That's yeah. 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 details that are easier. easier. We can check the yes box pretty easy. Can we ask Janet to send a, an email to the Agriculture Commission? And, and ask if we could, yeah. We're interested and we think you could contribute and let us know. If something simple like that might be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Might be something that could help us uh, scour up. Oh, I can do something. Well, Ryan, Mr. whatever, either one of you come okay. up with something that. Isn't Mr. Norse the head of the Ag Commission? I don't know who's, who's on your Ag Commission. Uh, let me pull it up here. Were they meeting recently? They met last night. They met yesterday, okay. They, they might be willing to answer the phone. Yeah, okay. Okay, what else we have? I think that's... I think we have the next meeting, right? Would that move to adjourn? Are we in, Second, uh, can I ask nope. one, one question? Okay, go ahead. Before? I'm sorry, Brian. But okay. Any progress on the Williamsburg Road project? Yes. It's in design. What? It's in design. It's in design. Yeah, so it's an engineer hired, and it's being designed. Anticipated construction, I believe, will be this spring. Really? Yep. I bet. Uh, All the funding is yeah. is secure. Yeah. I remember the funding. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could find it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, okay. They're having another meeting. Uh, I move to adjourn. Okay, second. We adjourn. All in favor, we're adjourned. Aye.